I wonder if it can create something like this. No freaking way! Enigmatic E. Hey everyone, today I'm gonna be trying to do something using Blockade Labs. This is powered by, according to this article that I'm reading from Theodore McKenzie, it says, Powered by Stable Diffusion and ControlNet Scribble preprocessor, the application takes a flat sketch drawn by the user and sends it to the Skybox Diffusion model, which in turn returns an image based on a prompt that follows shapes and concepts of the sketch, effectively allowing one to turn simple drawings into appealing 360 degree images. Skybox AI is for now, at least, a free research tool. So definitely take advantage right now that it's free. So based on the videos that I've seen, I kind of have an idea of how this works, but this is going to be my first time using it. So my goal today is to create a 360 environment, kind of like what you're seeing here, to give it like a 3D feel and put it into Blender. And I want to bring in a video where I generated a stable diffusion animation. These are videos that I already did 3D camera tracking to. I removed the background and just kept the subject and then ran it through Stable Diffusion to get an AI video. And I want this 360 background to kind of move as I was moving the camera when I was shooting the video so I can get like a parallax effect in the background. What I've done in the past is I would go search for a 3D model so that I can put it into Blender and then have that be the background. But then that wasn't always convenient because either I would have to pay for these 3D models or I would have to search for free ones. And sometimes the 3D models didn't really match the subject. I'm hoping with this, I can create something that's a little bit more efficient. It's not gonna be like a real 3D background, but I'm hoping here I can customize it enough that it matched the subject well. All right, so let's try it out. So I'm a little familiar with this interface because of the video. I think here you can put like a prompt just like you would do in Stable Diffusion. Oh yeah, so you can uh, put negative prompts here. That's very cool. Uh, generate depth. What does that say? Uh, toggle to generate a depth map on your next skybox. So this will generate a depth map, which is very cool as well. Digital painting, different styles here. Storybook, claymation, claymation, that's very cool. Uh, CG film, sci-fi. Yeah, so there's a lot of options here. It's very cool. All right, so now we seem to be like in this 360 world. Click and move around it. So here are my tools. Here's my hand, the brush, an eraser. We got some shortcuts for this. So move H or space to move around. B for brush. Okay, so if you brush and then you press E, you can erase this just like any drawing software. What is this? Brush size, kind of self-explanatory. Clear all. So I'm guessing you just... Yeah, just clears it. Uh, guides, so sphere, sphere grid. I think this is what we're in right now. A square grid, I think that's pretty cool because I'm assuming like some guides here for some straight lines, which is very cool. View skybox gives you a preview of what you've generated. This last one, plane grid. Oh, okay, so it gives you like a floor. All right, so let's start drawing some stuff. Uh, let me start something very basic. Something like a, a five-year-old me would draw. Home, city, and the background. And let's see what we get. Okay, um, not exactly what I had in mind. What is happening here? Oh, okay, I see it. So, okay, so you bring your mouse here on this interface to see what you drew and then compare it to what was actually generated. I actually did the shape pretty well. Did the trees, even though I didn't put it in the prompt. Like the house, there's two trees by the house. Here, it made the car into homes. Maybe if I would have put car in the prompt, it would have known what this is. And it didn't see this as a bush it saw like other houses here so it does a lot of guessing it did guess right sometimes it actually knew what i was trying to do here oh that's sick this is not usable for me but i'm very impressed on what it did with my drawing let me try another thing really quick A cyberpunk alleyway anime art style. Let's see what it gives us. Knights. All right. Ooh, okay. What's going on here? Okay. Oh my gosh. 
This looks sick. The thing is, I want to find out how much does my drawing influence the final output because this is sick. It looks nice, right? Obviously it's not perfect. You see a lot of like just mush here. This looks like concept art, right? But uh, let's see how much of my drawing actually took effect. All right. So what is it doing here? Okay. I was actually hoping that it would be closed off, but it does seem to follow some of these lines. Oh my gosh, that's so sick. I don't even know what I'm doing. Sometimes I'm just drawing and hoping that something cool will come out of it, but it gets a lot of the shapes, right? It did make kind of like this vanishing point here, but it didn't do it the way I drew it, but that's fine. It added some lights here. Like it saw that I drew it once and it just did it more times here. I expect that the more experience you have with this, the more you know how to, match the prompt with the drawing. Yeah, I think you have to learn how to draw things a certain way so that the drawing and the prompt work together somehow. I'm also not being very descriptive in the prompt. I think if I add more details, then it will start to identify those things that I'm trying to draw. So actually, let me try doing something like a video game of uh, Bioshock. I love Bioshock. That's one of my favorite games. Oh my God, this looks like Bioshock. Let me try to get a little bit more descriptive here. Oh, okay. Oh my God, that's so sick. Like this robot definitely gives me Bioshock vibes. I wonder if it can create something like this. I'll just do something that's kind of rough. No freaking way. No way. That is crazy. What the hell? It did it. It did it. It did the whole body. I mean, it's it's not this, right? It's not this. But you can see it's inspired by this. It did the arm here, but this th this arm, I was hoping it had like the drill like this, but it it's, has it down here, but that's fine. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. So I did want to create a background for this video, and then I want to create a background for this one. Not exactly what I had in mind. Crazy, man. Look at this. So cool. I'm going to save this one uh, for the anime one. I'm just going to change this to uh, anime art style. Oh, this isn't too bad. It's uh, definitely kind of like a sketch of an anime. Let me try remix and just add some stuff. Like, I don't know if I can add contrast anime style from what i understand remix will just use what's already here and then make some adjustments or changes so let me see what it does oh uh, no do i just take this off okay contrast and colorful let's try that okay this is definitely better so i'm gonna download this one now that i got some results that i want to use now let's go into blender all right so as you see here i did some camera tracking with this one and i have this big old dome thing that i was using just something that i could find that was free and that would fit the style of this cosplayer now we just generated some new stuff so let's try to Put that in there this is not going to be rendered this is just so i can see what it's going to look like what i want to do is i want to bring in that background so everything's already tracked so i don't have to do anything just bring in that 360 background so i have a video talking about how to 3d track there should be a link above where you can check that out i know that my 3d camera tracking video is quite long but you should go to the chapter where it talks about the specific things that you need if you're only going to be running it in blender or if you're going to be running it through after effects and then into blender which is easier then you just go to those sections to learn about that my steps for bringing the ai video from stable diffusion is i do 3d tracking i rotoscope the subject run the rotoscope subject through stable diffusion 
bring it back to After Effects where I can use the rotoscope subject as a mat to remove the black background from the AI video. Then I export this as an AVI video and set it to RGB and alpha, which will export the video without a background. Then I bring this into Blender. I make sure I select the camera, go to the camera icon, click on background images, click on add image, click on movie clip, click on open, bring the video file, go to where it says depth and put front and make opacity 100. And you have it here in Blender with the transparent background. What we wanna do is we wanna come here to shading. Here in shading, we want to create some nodes. We wanna come here to where it says object and we're gonna go to world. And then there's gonna be two nodes right here. We're gonna add some stuff to this. So we're gonna pull from this little circle that says color and then you put environment texture and you click on that and then it's going to move around until you click and then it just stays there. And then here is where you're going to put in the 360 environment we just created. So we're gonna go to open, we're going to that folder where we saved everything at. Let's use this one, for example. When you apply that, you don't see it right away and that's because you have to come up here to the top right where you have these circles you're gonna go all the way to the right where it's going to allow you to preview the render. Click on that and then you have all this here. The next thing we need to do is we need to pull here and then we gotta put in mapping, okay? And then we click and then we pull one more time and then we're gonna put texture coordinate and we're gonna go to generated right here. So now when I play it back, the background is actually gonna move as well. With this mapping node, we can come here to where it says rotation and we can go to Z. It's gonna rotate the background. We can move it to wherever we want. And so when we play it back, it's going to rotate where we want it to rotate. You can mess around with the scale. It's not gonna look right because you're stretching it, but maybe unstretching it looks a little bit better. If you bring it down slightly, it looks a little bit tighter. You can adjust it if you feel like it's off a little bit. So that's how you do that. You can always change the background. Here where you brought the 360 image, you can click on this X if you wanna change it. Go to open and then open that folder again. Let's say you want like more of a Bioshock kind of background, right? So you can do that. It's only gonna render what's in this square because this is my dimensions of this video. Yeah, you might see that there's a little bit of shaking. It's because the tracking was a little off for this one, but you kind of get the idea. So once I'm ready to export it, I wanna come here to output properties. This thing that looks like it's printing a picture, I click on that, I make sure everything is correct. Uh, it's a one by one, so it's 1080 by 1080. The frame rate should be 23.98. Uh, here, file format I want it in. You can do it into an image sequence, so you can do it straight to a video. I'm gonna try doing video. I put where I wanna save it, and then I come up here to render, and then render animation. It's gonna render it pretty fast. I would rotate it so that it would be straight. Here in location, I would use this little arrow to try to move up a little bit, and then just rotate around to a place that you like. I would play it from here. Yeah, this is how I would use it and give it like a really cool background. This is not like the perfect solution because you gotta take into account a lot of things like in real life when you're doing like this parallax turn, um, not everything is turning at the same speed. Things that are closer and, and the things that are further are moving at different speeds. There's a lot of things to take into account, but uh, this is just something that I would use like for social media or something like, uh, maybe you can get away with doing it for a client if you wanna use this method. I think that as long as it looks convincing, that's all that matters. So here I'm adding the background that I just created. So when you see it play out, you get something like this. I would actually add an adjustment layer and put either Gaussian blur or camera lens blur and then just blur out the background just to separate the subject from the background and give the background a little bit of that feeling of distance. All right, so let's check this one out. Yeah, I mean, it looks cool. Again, I would color grade something like this. So it's a little bit, to be a little bit more orange. Definitely have it matching more of the colors in the background. Kind of try to have it match the contrast. not perfect again it's a cool thing to do if you want to add something in the background hopefully this can be useful for some of you because I know that not everyone wants to do a 
like a 3D style background. So hopefully there is some people that find value in this. Uh, like I said, just for fun, for social media, or if this is just kind of a cool thing to use. I will have this project and the videos on my Patreon for those that are supporting me through there. And also I'm gonna start putting more stuff on there, like settings and stuff like that. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and all that good stuff. I appreciate everyone. Like always, take care, God bless, and peace.